Hi everyone, and welcome to AutoCAD. My name is Ari, and I'm an AutoCAD professional with Digital Drafting Systems. Today, we're going to learn about the M leader function, and this tutorial is a continuation of our previous tutorial on the leader function. We learned how to use the regular lead or leader tool in the previous video. Now, let's look at M leader. An M leader can be found by going to our home tab, and in the annotation panel, we can see leader. We can also click on this drop down here and see more options for leaders that we'll go over very soon. So we can create a leader here, and this seems to be the regular lead tool, but it's not. And we can see that when we mouse over it, it tells us that the command line prompt is M leader. So this is essentially replaced the old lead tool, and this is preferred by AutoCAD and by most people who use AutoCAD. So let's now click on leader and we can now create one. And we have many different options. We can see in our command line that it wants us to specify our leader arrowhead's location, or we can also get the leader's landing first, get content first, or go and see more options. We're going to explore those options very soon. First, we're just gonna make a basic M leader. So I'm just gonna click right around here. I'm gonna draw my M leader right here, and you'll see that it doesn't ask us to specify our shoulder size. In the lead tool, it does. So this one has a predefined shoulder size that you can specify when you go into the settings. And I'll show you how to do that very soon. So we can type in some data. So I'm gonna call this M leader, and then I'll just click in an empty area. And there it is. And the leader is now matching the layer that I'm currently using. And that's how we can make a basic M leader. Let's make another M leader and let's use some more options this time. So we'll click on our command here and let's specify our first point, or of course, we can look in our command line and let's see what else we can do. Instead of specifying the arrowhead first and then placing the location where our text goes, we have the options in our command line to use the leader landing first, content first, and we have a general options area. Let's look at leader landing first. So what this is asking us is to essentially place the landing, and we can call this the leader's shoulder as well. So wherever you want the shoulder to go, we're gonna place this. So let's say I place it right here. Then it's gonna ask us where we wanna put our arrow, and then it specifies our text. So we can put the letter A1, for example, some kind of specification, and then we can just click in an empty area. So we did things in a slightly different order, and this could be useful if you wanna expedite the way you create leaders, and if you want your leader text and the actual landing or shoulder to be in a specific location. Now let's do this one more time. We're gonna use the tool again, and instead of just using that option, which is now stuck in stone, we can go back and use leader arrowhead first to go back to placing the arrow first and then the content. This time we're going to do content first. This is very similar to using the shoulder or the landing first, because now we're gonna specify our text first, which we can do right here. So let's type in so our text, of course, it asks us before typing to create a text box size. So we can make one at a random size, such as this size right here. And then we can call this B2, for example. And then we'll just click in an empty area. Immediately after, our shoulder is created and we can move the shoulder to the left or the right of our text. And then we can place our arrow anywhere we want. So I'm just basically moving my mouse and you can see what happens. Every time I get beyond the middle threshold, it essentially switches places. So that way I can put my shoulder on either side of my text. So let's put our arrow right around there. And now we've created the leader in the third option. Now let's look at some more options for M leaders. Let's create another M leader. And this time we're gonna look at the options down in our command line. Now there's quite a few of them, so let's go over them one by one. First, we have the leader type, so we can click on this. It's now gonna ask us to basically specify which of these three options we want. So we can have a straight, spline, or no leader type at all. The straight one we're going to use right now, and we can see that it's already been in use. We can see it in brackets right here. So that means that we've been using the straight style. Let's check just in case. Now, before we go, if you move your mouse away from the command line while you're in this set of options here, it essentially moves the option area with you. And you'll see this in a few commands in AutoCAD, so don't be alarmed. You don't really want to press escape unless you actually want to exit these options. But right now we've essentially changed our leader type and we can see how it applies right now. So we're just going to exit our options right here. And now if we make another leader, I'm going to go back to using the arrowhead first option we can see that basically nothing will really change. So I'm just gonna place my arrow here, then my data comes out, and 
we can type data. And then we can just click in an empty area, and there it is. So nothing's really changed, and that's the straight option that we've already seen before. Now, let's do that one more time, and we're going to go back to our options. We're going to go to leader type, and this time let's use the spline option. So here, the leader type's already been specified, so as soon as we move outside of the command line, this set of options pops up again. So we're going to click on Exit Options, and now we can make our leader one more time. So let's make it right around here, and we'll see what happens. Look at that. A beautiful curved spline is now appearing. And so I can essentially click and then type more data, and then we can see that we have a curved leader. There is no real shoulder. It's just one entire spline. And this spline can be manipulated a little bit, but it really only has one endpoint and one point at this end right here. So we can basically leave it as is, and we'll look at a few more options for leaders right now. Let's create another leader now, and let's look at some more options, another M leader to be exact. So we're going to go to our options here. We already understand how leader type works and the leader landing. We can change leader landing as well. Can basically say whether or not we want a leader landing or not so in this case we can say yes and then it's going to ask us what our landing distance is going to be so it looks like it's fixed at about 0.36 units so i'd like that to be about 0.25 so i'm going to type in 0.25 and then enter so now we've changed our leader landing which essentially is the shoulder of the leader so let's get our options menu over here and let's continue looking at them we can then look at content type and we can change our content type here. It's, now it's essentially asking us to select whether or not we want to include a block or M text or none. And this is very similar to the regular lead tool that we showed in our previous tutorial. So we're not going to demonstrate that right now, but just so you know, you can actually use a block instead of text when you're doing the content type. So right now I'm going to leave it at M text because none is not really preferred. We don't want a leader by itself. And the M text is typically what a leader is connected to. So we're going to leave it at M text. And let's look at max points here. This is very interesting. It's asking us, how many points do you want for the leader line? This essentially is asking us how many shoulders we want to include with our leader line. So two points would essentially mean that we would have the first point and then the shoulder, for example, and then that would be it, basically. So we could actually have a third point where it would ask us to specify that third point and continue from there. Let's test that and see how it works. So we're going to type in three and then enter. And now that our options are done, we're going to exit our options and we're now going to create our leader. So let's make one. Let's move a little bit to the left right here and let's make it right here and we'll put it right around there. Now it's asking for the, le the landing location. So I can now specify this at any length that I want to, just like we did with the regular lead tool. So I'm gonna type in 0.25 and then enter. Now it's asking us for another one. And then you can see here that it looks like the uh, 0.25 seemed to be an invalid input. So it doesn't really want me to type anything. It actually wants me to place it with my mouse. Let's try that one more time, so 0.3. Yes, that is an invalid input. It says it in the command line. So we actually have to click with the mouse. We're not able to really uh, place this the way we want to. And you can see that the actual end of the line is not coinciding with the cursor location. So we'll have to kind of eyeball this one. So I can place that here. Then it asks me for the text. So I can just put in the number four here and then click in an empty area. And so that's how that works. Let's actually go back to our leader tool. Let's try that one more time. I'm going to basically go to our options here. We're going to go to max points. Let's change it back to two and see how that works again. Then we'll exit our options. Let's make another one. So we'll go right around here. We don't need ortho on, so we can just turn that off. So basically, it asks, it essentially puts the leader's um, shoulder in the correct location automatically if max points is set to two. And then we can just type our data, such as the number three right here, and that's that. Here, if our max points is set to three or more, we can essentially see that there is an extra point here that it places, and that's where our cursor was. So essentially, when you use three or more, that those points will essentially be at this cursor point here, and then they will be adding that extra distance to get to the end of the leader, it seems. Although 
that doesn't quite look exactly the same as this distance from here to here. So I would recommend using about two points and then allowing yourself to specify the length of your leader's shoulder. It's a very in interesting set of settings for the leader. Let's look at a few more. Let's explore some of my favorite settings in the multi-leader function. We can then click on the command. We're going to go to options. And then first angle and second angle are very, very unique sets of options here. Let's look at first angle. So we have a few choices right now. We can immediately enter a constraint. So we can change it from zero, which essentially means that we can draw in any direction, to a set angle such as 30 degrees or 45 degrees, etc. Now, if I click on my screen here, you'll see that I can simulate what it's like to work with the zero constraint, meaning that I basically can draw this anywhere, and it's a free form sketch, essentially. So in doing this, though, it is asking us for our second point, essentially. So if I try to type in a number such as 30 degrees, it basically says invalid input. Now it's asking once again for the first angle constraint again. And so I can now type in 30. And this time it actually works. And that's because we were in the middle of another command. And it actually went back to the previous one and asked us for the constraint. So a little bit odd on how that works. And we're going to go back into the command and see more details about that. But for now, we're going to exit our options and see what we've done now that we've changed our first angle to 30 degrees. So now if I click in any area, let's say that I click right around here, for example, you can see that we're now moving in a fixed increment. No matter where I move the mouse, the leader doesn't really change much. And when I say much, I mean that we can draw horizontally, of course. We have 30 degrees relative to the horizontal zero axis. And then you'll see that it snaps up here to this one. So this snap is actually 60 degrees or 30 degrees from the 90 degree axis. So that's why the 30 degree angle is actually quite useful and gives us more than one angle to work with. So we can now use these fixed angles and we can really improve the professionalism on some of our annotations with these. But you can see how 30 degrees is not just relative to zero, it's also relative to 90. Therefore, we get 60 as well. If I was to set 45, it would basically just give us 45 straight in the middle of our horizontal and vertical axis. So let's place this at, uh, let's say, 30 degrees from the 90 plane right around here. And we can type some data. And you'll see that now that we've started from the right side, the text does flow in the other direction, but it still is in the order that you would expect it to be with English. So we can then click in an empty area. And there is our multi-leader. So very interesting how we can fix the angle of the multi-leaders, and that way we can be consistent as we draw. Not a huge necessary thing, but it could be quite useful. So let's look at another option in that first angle, and then let's look at second angle. Let's look at the last option for multi-leaders. We'll go back to the command, go to options, and here we have second angle. And with second angle, we can essentially see that we have the same thing that it's asking us. It's asking us for that second angle constraint. And if we try any degree that's not an increment of 15 degrees, then it's not going to let us input that data. So if I type in 14, it'll say invalid input, but 15 will work. Now, after we set that, we're essentially back in the options menu, and then we can set more options. Now, let's see how this actually works for the multi-leader. So we're just going to exit our options. And then we're just going to specify our arrowhead. So we can do that right here. And you can see that the previous setting for the first increment has now reset itself. It is no longer set at 30 degrees. So this means that this, these options in the command line are actually temporary. And there's another way that we can control these options and keep them permanent. And I'll show you all that very soon. So first, we'll put our leader here. And it looks like the second increment isn't really even being used right now. It seems like it isn't uh, giving us any new content or data because it looks like our angle here seems to still be the same thing. So I'm essentially just going to type in 15 to signify what we did there. And that seems to be it for the second increment. Now, what's really important is that the command line seems to also have another issue. So we're going to go back to our leader. And we're going to go to options and we're going to try and go back to second angle here you can see that our number 15 is still there if i try to type zero and press enter it says that that is an invalid input and it seems like through the command line we're not able to change our constraints back to zero now this doesn't just apply for the second one it also applies to the first angle increment so right now it still says that it's set to 30 even though we were able to change it to any degree and it wasn't giving us that fixed angle so if I try to change that back to zero, it also says invalid input. 
Now, luckily, all of this can be controlled in our multi-leader style manager. And so we can find that not in the home tab or any custom tab that you make. You can see the annotation tab doesn't really have that feature. And the drop down here just gives us some tools that we can use for multi-leaders that I'll be covering in a later video. But basically, we can go to our annotate tab right here. And then if we go to the leaders panel itself, we can see that now it says multi-leader is the name of the function instead of leader. Although in the description, it does say leader creates a multi-leader object. So it looks like they're trying to replace the old lead tool with the multi-leader tool in some ways, uh, not just uh, in terms of commands, but in terms of visuals. And we can see that there's an arrow in the bottom right here. This is the same way that we access our dimension style manager with a little arrow right here. So we can click on this arrow here and we can access our multi-leader style manager. Now, there's a lot to cover in the multi-leader style manager, but just know that that is the proper way to reset and change your first increment and second angle increments to zero or to basically any number that's a multiple of 15. And we're going to get into that in a later tutorial because it's a lot of data. Thanks very much for watching our tutorial on M leaders. This is a continuation of our leader tutorial. And in the next one, we're going to be covering the multi-leader style manager. And that's going to tell us a lot more about how we can control our multi-leaders and really set our settings up for success. Once again, my name is Ari and I'm with Digital Drafting Systems. Hope you have a great rest of your day.